So today I want to talk to you about the law of light. What is the law of light, you might ask? Well, to me, it's the only law there is, and every other universal spiritual law comes underneath, comes inside of this one law that governs absolutely everything. 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 So, where do we start? We start with the simple and we work our way through the complex. My friend Sparkles, the squirrel, is here and he's been with me all morning. She's been with me all morning. She's been collecting all of the seeds, all of the apples, all of the corn, <laughs> um, all of the peanut butter. The one law of light. Let's start with the simple. Let's start with it. So big, it's so complex that even trying to simplify it is, is easy, yet it's like, how? So, here we go. <laughs> the law of light. The law of light. The law of light. States, expresses, is, that... Light is existing forever and always, no matter what. That's as simple as I can make that for you. Beginning and end, no matter. Existing is light always. Sentence from Yoda there for you. But truly, let's unpack this now. Because I want to talk a little bit about... <laughs> Um, life and death. I've talked about this before. I've talked about the universal spiritual laws before. It was probably one of the first. It's, it is the first video on this channel. It wasn't the first video I ever made. Um, that was an interesting sound. Hello. A lot of birds around here, so. Um, here's Sparky. Here's Dougie. Hey guys. Life and death, um, bit of an illusion, actually, bit of an illusion, but I'm not going to get too much into that other than maybe if it weaves in a little bit here and there, because what I'm trying to get to beyond life and death is that it's all eternal, it's all infinite, and one of the biggest things you'll see in our society, in our life, that's trickling down from this one law, this duality, duality, I'm saying that for a reason instead of duality, is this life and death construct that gets divided and conquered. Divided and conquered. Divided and conquered because every time it's being sent out into the ethers, this battle, this, this division, this side that wants death, this side that wants life, every time it's being sent out into the ethers, which nobody can help that by the way, that's the one of the laws, is that earth, wind, fire, water, ether, they are what govern the foundations of life, okay, so this is, these are laws within the one law of light, which is that light will forever exist no matter what. It cannot be destroyed. Energy cannot be destroyed. It's first. Energy is first. Energy can only be transformed into something else. Hello, starlings. There's like 50 starlings coming again. <laughs> I love it when they come. Um, in big families, they're always chatting together in the trees here. So... What is this battle about, you might ask? Well, it's about life and death. There's a faction of they're wanting to be death, and it's in all of us. And there's a faction of they're wanting to be the most beautiful, divine thing that there is, which is life. Cannot be destroyed. Energy can only be transformed. And even then, even then, when it is transformed, i.e. the Big Bang... Because that's a loop, by the way. It begins and ends. It begins new universes and ends new universes. But that ending of a universe is the beginning of a new one. 
pretty big, I know. It's just that I, I had this fear of death at the age of seven, I've told you guys, and I seen, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I seen universes exploding, and I thought that was the end of my life. But what I remembered actually about this after having delved deeper in these 27 years I've been on this planet and being a very deep thinker, you know, this tends to happen, and I'm grounded it in with you here and now, is that it's not the end, actually. When the Big Bang happens, whether it's beginning the end, beginning or the end, um, all of that energy, stardust, what you, whatever you want to call it, is transferred into the next dimension, into the next universe, into the next, next, next. So you have to ask yourself, what brings it to Big Bang? Unification. If it hasn't reached unification, it doesn't move dimensions, it stays at the level of dimension or density that it's at, but moves into a new universe. Potentially. There's some things there that I'm, I'm hearing it could even stay the same. It could just time loop back on itself and have to do the whole thing again because unification was not found. It was not met for the majority. Because here's the thing. We have this capacity to... The only way through... The only way through life actually, because there's no life or death. So just, just imagine, even if this sounds bonkers, imagine for a second that there's no such thing as life or death. It's just, it just is what it is. It's all life. It's all life. It's all light, actually. There's no, there's a stopgap. Yes, you, you're born and you die, but you're born and you die infinitely, infinitely, infinitely. In terms of who merges back with Source or ceases to exist forever, you will have to go in for the research of that because you have your own subjective, objective truth. I mean, of, overall, I'm speaking, <laughs> trying to speak to an objective truth. Um, but to be honest, it's so big and vast, I cannot cover all of it. All I can do is touch the basics. But the way that I understand what I'm relaying to you fully is that if we do reach unification, when the Big Bang happens, and that, that's the way out, by the way, when the sun explodes, that's the way out into a new um, physical dimension, although it can be a slightly higher density, let's say, you know, you might call it 5D, but I don't want to get too... With some of these words, um, when they get used too often by people that don't know what they're talking about... Hi, Chippy. Uh, when, when people don't know what they're talking about, and you might think that about me, so I know it's, it's a strange world we live in, but um, it, it can warp the meaning a little bit. So just see it as densities and dimensions, actually. And that's what we're climbing through with life and death, throughout life and death. And one of the things that tends to happen is if there's souls on the planet that want death only because they're sick of life, they're like, why is there no end to this stuff, right? They get really angry about it, get really upset about it. It's like, why am I in prison for infinity? Because to some, life is like a type of jail. Because they can't, appreciate that energy is first and that light will always exist all right this is the root suffering cause of everything this is the split we all have from consciousness that even though even though we are split from consciousness we still have a part of us inside of us that is part of source consciousness that is untouched forever so even these souls that choose with their free will to stay in darkness including afterlife they don't get healed they don't go to the places that they need to go because they don't follow inspiration they follow fear and death instead um, what tends to happen is that they'll live this out for a very long time because they're stubborn they want they want to sit in the darkness for as long as possible because they just do not want life or light to be the one rule, the one law that there is. It's the only law that there is, but they still don't want that one law. 
there will come a time where they incarnate again in some kind of form because who wants to sit in darkness for the rest of their life? No one. Who wants to sit in darkness for a millennia? No one. Like everyone gets sick of that eventually because there's literally, it, it's like being starving and someone avenge, after millions of years gives you a plate of food. I mean, who knows? Maybe some of these beings just sit in the darkness no matter what and that's their choice. But most of them will reach out for the food because it's something new. But what what tends to happen is that they won't follow the inspirations because they've sat in the darkness the whole time. One of the things that we do before we come here and after we, we leave here, we plan for the next incarnation, right? And one of the things that your soul will do is... And, and these are, this, this is more um, subjective, by the way. I'm not saying this is objective. The only objective truth that I'm suggesting in this video is the one law that I mentioned right at the beginning. That's the only one that I'm saying and I can confirm that it's objective. That's the only one I'm saying here. So everything else, take it with a pinch of salt. Um, take what resonates, leave the rest. All right. The only law that it really truly I know exists is that light exists forever. Um, will always exist, has always existed. Um, some people may say that it began somewhere, that creator made it, um, but they're looking at not the full scope, they're looking at, say, something like the Big Bang, where something created that. That's just an after effect of, of something that's been going on for, <laughs> and there's no trace in it, no trace in that. So these beings that stay in darkness, they want death only, they can't appreciate that life goes on forever and you know we've all been there it's frustrating especially when you feel into the depths of this time loop that we're in um so they will do all they can in their power to make it so that we do stay in time loops we never reach unification and that every time we do reset everyone becomes in their eyes they want darkness 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 they want people to hate life as much as them so that we all kind of almost like stand up to consciousness and say, hey, we're protesting this one. This one needs to know that death needs to happen. All right? None of this messing about with there being no death. There ought to be, right? And this is what we say. So that's, that's the one, that's the duality that's trickled down for the longest time. I don't know if it began with Lucifer creating their own reality, I, th I feel like with, with Lucifer, it's actually um, still a bright angel. And I'm not going to get into that too much. I'm just saying that I think there's, there's never really been a split because there has been unification. And then as soon as it's unified, it, it, it will come back again. It will come back again. It will come back again. Um, because we are consciousness. We are. We have that source spark in us. We're all connected to that. But what I'm what I'm trying to get at here is that they will do everything in their power to stop unification from happening so that when the Big Bang does happen and we do move density and we do move dimension and we move into the next plane, because everything that happens in this universe, by the way, doesn't just so suddenly disintegrate when the sun blows up, for example. It, actually, that energy gets carried into the next place. Energy can only be transformed. It cannot be destroyed. Hope you get in my gist with this. I know. I know some of you are. Um, so one of the things we have the advantage with, my friends, is that for those of us that have come to terms with the fact that, okay, we're here for the long run, there is no getting out of this. The only way out is through and the only way through is unification, consciousness. So instead of fighting against ourselves, instead of being in time loops all the time, because that's no fun. Everyone, of course, gets annoyed and sick of that because that's just repeating the same things but you know time actually is um a bit more clever than that and <laughs> we, we don't just repeat the same things over and over again we we make things um there's a lot of intelligent beings here all right and and they they um guide the trajectory so what i'm trying to say is if these beings don't ever follow inspiration because they, they haven't planned it in. Consciousness will plan it in for them. It will kind of offer uh, uh, an incarnation and they'll just jump straight into it. But some of us, when we when we pass over, we'll, we'll be in front of a council of light. We'll go through every single aspect of our lives in preparation for the next one. And we'll do studying, we'll do research, we'll do, you know, just time spent in, in, in bliss, in euphoria, in, in little places that are absolutely just like heaven. Um, 
in preparation for the next life because like I said it's all one thing it's just it's just a transition life death transition life death transition but some of these beings will not follow inspiration because they just either haven't spent enough time in the darkness yet to know that it's just no point there's absolutely no point to it so what consciousness wants to remind you and everyone else of is that actually consciousness doesn't want anyone to fight or suffer it just wants people to realize that you can actually step into the the love and the light that's here and you do that by accepting that this is a divine grand plan that you're a part of and it's absolutely beautiful and it feels amazing actually when you tap into that let's take a breath here take a breath it feels amazing when you step into that when you fight against that because you're fearful of it, you become fearful of everything and you never follow inspirations because one of the things that's set for you is that you, when you follow an inspiration, it's set by your soul or it's set by consciousness. I'm explaining this so you have context, by the way. Again, going back to what I said in the beginning, one, one rule, one law only. And with this law of light, it wants everyone to come into the light so that they can keep climbing up in density, in, um, in evolution. And there's a reason for it. We're just not necessarily given the reason. We're not given the tools. We're not given the studying, the research of things like ascension. We're not given the research necessarily, the correct research. And that's why a lot of this information I've gathered from Gaia, from the universe from the akashic space that i go to inside of me because you can get just as much from that space as you can research in a book or a, an article or what have you so these beings will constantly turn away from inspiration because a they didn't set the inspiration for this life themselves and b they don't trust source they have this wound deepest wound possible with both mother and father Something's happened to them in one of their lifetimes where they've completely split off. And we may have all been through this at some point. Some of us may find out what this is like in another life. I don't know. But they've, they've had a big split and they've not been able to heal it or fix it. And so coming into this life, they will do everything they possibly can to do the opposite of follow inspirations. And can you imagine what will happen to you if you lived your whole life never following a single inspiration that came to you? You'd be very sad, angry, depressed. I mean, talk about the people that do follow inspirations. I already get depressed and I follow inspirations. So the people that don't, they can cause some serious pain and suffering here because they themselves are in serious pain and suffering. So I hope I'm making myself clear with all of this. Um, basically, the law of light is that it, we're, we're here for infinity. And whether we merge back with consciousness or whether we, we go into soul form and we kind of wander the ethereal realms in order to prepare for the next life, and prepare for the next density, it doesn't matter. We're here for infinity. We're here for light. Energy is first. And that's the only law that there is. And so once some of these beings that just want death realize that death can never happen, not really, you can have suffering, you can have suffering. Yes, free will states that you can have that. If you want it, you can have it. But there are systems in place. There are those intelligent beings, wise beings with truth, actual truth, linked in with universal wisdom and love that have been watching our timeline for a long time and they will, here's the thing, right? And this is getting a bit deeper, so um, this is getting deeper now. But one of the things that I've kind of, I feel like is important now if you're still here for this video, one of the things that I feel is important for you to know is that we've already reached unification consciousness. But what happened, and here's what happened, because technology and time is tricky. We, we have those that would use benevolent technology when needed in order to make sure, like, in order to make a decision that's best for all concerned. And what happened in one of the um, 
time loops that we're in is that we already reached unification consciousness, but we have to work all the way backwards. We have to actually program it in. We actually have to live it here and now in these bodies, in this lifetime. Me as Kim has to live it. You as you has to live it um, so that we can actually say we did it and, and have it be a true law. Because one of the things that can happen with unification is that it doesn't move on to a new universe, it can actually go back on itself in order to show everyone that this is possible. Now we just have to live it and we have to follow the trajectory. We knew it was a risk to do this. They knew it was a risk to do that. But the thing is, is that they made a decision based on the best information that they had. So this information, because I, I asked them, well, why would we not just follow the timeline the way it's linearly going? And they said that, you know, that doesn't always work. And we we might still be in a type of caveman period, actually, if they hadn't have interfered with our timeline. Which I said, well, what, what's wrong with that? Like, what's wrong with just letting time take its course? But I can see that they made the decision they did for the reasons that they thought were the best. And that's all anyone can ever do, all right? There is no... When, you're, when it comes to subjective truth, there's no objective truth. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that there's only one objective truth. And that's all I'll ever say because I don't think there's anything more than that. I don't think there's anything that we can say is an objective truth. Apart from that light will always exist because energy is first and cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed. That is the only objective truth that I've ever been able to sit here and say, honestly, being 100% vulnerable, honest, authentic with you right now. That is the only one that I know of. I know that there may be other objective truths like gravity, but, you know, there is whatever. So, subjectively, we have to make decisions, right? And the light, consciousness, just wants us to step into light, just wants us to step into love. That's all it's trying to get us to do. It doesn't want us to fight. There's no army going on here, people. There's no army of even love and light. I mean, there is, and it's definitely a real thing. But what I'm saying is we fight with love. We fight with wisdom. We fight with truth. We don't fight with some of the... We don't... We don't stoop to that level where it's all dark and dingy and fight with the, with all of that stuff I mean that might happen for a time but I'm just saying like I think the level that we're at right now as a collective we can we can uphold this one space of if you can just accept that life is this divine gift and you can just get in tune with it and you can love yourself from the inside out things are gonna be okay. Unification will eventually happen. And you know what happens when unification happens? It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible when that happens. That's all I'll say for now. So thanks for listening. Peace to you and blessings your way.